And my first question is, um, what factors help you decide what cases to take on? And like, do you have to do extensive research beforehand? What I do, so let's just take the Stephen Avery case, okay, as, a, as an example. So Stephen Avery had contacted my office several years before we took the case, and we have a screen set up so that if someone presents, if their case presents with a lot of incriminating forensic evidence, it would be very difficult to get us to accept the case back then um, in 2011. However, I, like millions of other people, ended up watching the first series of Making a Murder. I had just had a blood spatter case where I got my client exonerated because the blood spatter was incorrect. As soon as I saw the blood spatter in Teresa Halbach's car, I knew that there was something wrong with the forensic evidence in the case. So if one piece of the evidence has been planted, all of it has been planted. Um, who we'll planted it was an issue, um, but that was, so when we screen, we want people who've been convicted who want forensic testing done. That's a good litmus test that someone's innocent. No one guilty is going to be asking us to do forensic testing. Last week I was in Houston on a murder case and the prosecutors invited me there on a case they got a conviction but they want it, they're open to retesting. They're not sure they've got the right person. And so we're gonna work together and do a lot of DNA testing. So for me, a lot of it begins and ends with the science. It's, it's very tricky to just work off witness testimony or witness recantations.